So let's talk about those seasons of dormancy in our lives. There's a very powerful experience found in 1 Kings chapter 17 through 19 in the life of the prophet Elijah that gives us really powerful insight into those seasons we go through when we enter a time of dormancy. And it's been on my mind, so I want to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about that today. Uh, just a quick recap, in case you're not familiar with Elijah's journey. In, El in 1 Kings 17, God speaks to him and tells him to confront the wicked King Ahab, king of Israel, and tell him that until he releases the prophetic decree by the governing authority of the Spirit of God on his life, there will be no rain in Israel. And so for three and a half years, Israel is in a time of devastating drought. And why I'm pointing that out in terms of the prophetic nature is to see that Elijah on a human level is in perfect agreement with the timing of God. He's tracking with God's timing. And yet what we see there is that he goes uh, on a journey where there were times where he went into a dormant phase in his own, his own life, his own ministry. And we go through dormant seasons. So when you're in a dormant season, if you don't have perception, if you don't have discernment, if you're not clearly aware on a spiritual level in terms of what the Holy Spirit is up to, it may seem like things are dead. Elijah, after having released that word to Ahab, has to run for his life and hide. God told, tells him, he says, I want you to go to a place uh, in the wilderness. It's a brook called Kerith. And uh, I want you to stay there in hiding, and you're not going to do any ministry. You're not going to uh, be free to travel. You're going to have to hang out for a while in a dormant place. And when we go through dormant seasons, it can really look like things are dying on us. When you look at the journey of Elijah there, you see that the brook begins to dry up. God sends ravens to feed him. But for Elijah, while he's there at the brook waiting for God to turn the season and move him from dormancy to movement, from dormancy to growth, from dormancy to dream or destiny expression, you discover that Elijah has to deal with looking at the landscape of his life where things look like they're dead or dying. You see, that's why I said a minute ago it's so important to have a spirit perspective because the difference between death and dormancy is huge. When something's dead, it's over. When something's dead, it's that season has changed. It's over. It's gone. You got to move on from it. You're not getting it back. But dormancy means that you're in a state of inactivity. A lot of times it's God resting you for the next thing he has ahead of you. And so there are seasons in our lives where our dreams go through dormant uh, places uh, maybe we personally, emotionally, spiritually, we're dormant, uh, may feel dead. It may seem dead. It may look dead. We're not. God's just got us kind of in a place where things aren't active, things aren't flourishing, things aren't growing, things aren't thriving at a heart, in a way that we want them to, rather, at a heart level. And when we go through a dormant place, it can be extremely frustrating. But the good news is dormancy is a season. It's a state that is temporary. In fact, dormancy is a temporary state. We can even go through like Elijah did then in a season where our gifts, our strengths, our skills are dormant. And when you go through a time where you wrestle with weakness in your life, where your strengths and skills, maybe the anointing on your life or the calling doesn't seem to be flourishing and it doesn't seem like you're enlarging and expanding and living life at the level you know God's called you and built you to live it, it can be extremely challenging. And the test in the dormant place is to perceive that what's going on with you is that you're in the temporary state of dormancy before the next season of expansion. In agriculture, when a seed is planted, before it begins the process of multiplication and increasing, it goes through a dormant phase. It means there's no discernible action. No discernible activity. It looks like nothing's happening. And that's so frustrating for us when we're in a season of dormancy because it looks and feels like nothing's happening. 
But I want to encourage you today, if you're in a dormant state, just like Elijah at the brook, something's happening. You know why? Because you're moving forward in the timing of God. You're right on track with the timing of God and you're moving in divine synchronicity. In fact, it may be that you're in a dormant state right now because you've been successful in a previous season. You succeeded like Elijah did in an old assignment, so now you're processing dormancy while God gets ready to move you into your next. So when you track his story, you find out that when that time at the brook was over and God's ready to move him, when he's coming out of dormancy, God says, I want you to go to a, a town called Zarephath up on the coast, north of Israel, to a widow that I've already commanded there to take care of you, and you're going to minister to her. So watch this. Dormancy comes oftentimes after we have succeeded greatly in one assignment, and watch this, it precedes a brand new door. So your dormancy the dormant state of being that you may be walking through right now may well be an indication that it's preceding a door that God's going to open in your life. So your assignment when you're in the dormant place is to recognize that your dream, your gift, your purpose, who you are is not dead. You've just entered a state of dormancy. And don't catch this. Don't mistake in action for a lack of a great outcome. Don't mistake inaction as though you've lost God's attention. When you're going through a dormant state, you've lost nothing. You've been prepared. You're being prepared, rather, in dormancy for a greater state of expansion. The dormancy we go through precedes the doors, the greater doors, those mega doors, Paul called them, that are ahead of us. So if you find yourself in a dormant, place today or at this season in your life, what you need to know is that the dormant place you're in precedes a door God's going to open. And the dreams and the callings and the giftings and the anointings and the purposes that the Spirit of God has put in your heart are going to expand on the other side of the door that's on the other side of your dormancy.